I'm going to call to order this uh, work session meeting of the Board of Commissioners for February 2nd, uh, 2022. And we will start with uh, Ms. Cottle from the Health Department. Please. Good morning. So what I'm bringing to you today is a request to use some of the recovery funds and I understand that goes to you and then it goes to council. So hopefully I have that process correct. Um, but our preparedness divisions, one of the things that we are required to do with, uh, we get that grant every year. So it requires us to do an after action report uh, related to COVID response. Well, I think when that was originally put in, you know, we thought we can, we can do that, right? We thought that we would be through it. We would be able to do it. And here we are in kind of year three that we are starting of COVID-19. And so this will be a pretty extensive um, after action report that needs to be done. You can imagine we have over, we have 15 capabilities that we have to look at. There's over a dozen groups of people that we have to address. Um, it does provide a template for us, so that's helpful. But I, I just don't see how we can do that on our own without outside help. And it seems that it would be quite appropriate to use those um, ARPA funds, uh, those recovery funds uh, for that purpose so that we could get an outside entity to run really those, you think of them like a focus group, right? That, uh, so if we're looking at what was our response related to um, the unhoused, what was our response related to schools, right? There are all these different groups um, and then bringing those individuals together to try to talk about what went well, what didn't go well, what can we do differently next time um, so that Hopefully in the future, we can um, have better plans in place. So we would love to have the, a third party help us do this. And I think that it's number one, the, the best and most efficient way for us to complete this task in the timeline that we have, but also to have somebody with expertise with that and some time to get those different groups together. Right now, our public health coordinator is busy trying to set up and help set up these clinics and, and all of that and work on plans. And I just can't imagine trying to pull staff to then do these um, after action meetings. Do you have an estimated cost yet for this? You know, I don't, I can't imagine it would be less than 10,000. But honestly, I do not have an estimate. We started to look at that and then kind of things kind of took back off in terms of sure. and distracted yeah. us from that. I would, I would, I always hate guessing at things like this, but I would say, you know, it could easily be 25,000, I would think, um, but I don't have an estimate at the moment. Okay. All right. Ms. Purdy, did you want to add something? Yeah, um, I wanted to just kind of throw out there that maybe the ARPA or the state and local uh, fiscal recovery funds, SLFRF, um, might not be the best use um, for this particular item, but I think that it's something that the council um, would you know, definitely want to be able to have a choice on how they want to use this. And I only say that because um, there is some concern that we're going to just kind of nitpick at those funds and not support a major um, project. Um, so I'm not recommending anything here. I'm just wanting to toss out that there might be an, um, an alternative source of funding for this. I mean, there is no doubt we need to do, I think this, we definitely need to do this. Um, it's gonna be good for all of us, I think, to see how we get through it. <laughs> so I just wanted to throw that out there for the record that there's there's more options for you, that's all. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree, although I don't know, you know, there's not one single big project either, but uh, this is certainly a smaller project, but it's certainly no less worthy 
Um, you know, there may be some CARES money left. Um, you know, there's a, there are some options there. And of course the council can, can determine where they, how they want to pay for this. Um, my colleagues have any thoughts? I'm certainly in favor of hiring an outside group if there's money available to do it. Um. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I don't think this is something your department should take on because there's no time. But also, it it um, it will ensure that this is sort of that outside perspective, right? That um, somebody from the outside looking in and asking asking questions and developing a report. So there's you know, there's absolutely, you know, maybe some questions that we might not think of. Um, I'm sure you'd think of a lot of great ones, but, um, but you know, it, it just seems like that's also a good a benefit here um, for this, using this project. Um, so uh, we do need to bring this to council. Um, I think it would be helpful to have a ballpark to go to council. Um, of a price, um, and and we'll I, I will certainly support it. Uh, sounds like my colleagues will as well. So when it gets to that point, so I, I think it's I think it's a great idea, and I think ARPA is a good backup if if nothing else seems to work. But it's not a an inordinately huge amount of money in the scheme of things. <laughs> All right, yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, and very beneficial for the community and, and the ending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the next pandemic, um, who, however we have to prepare for that, there needs to be something on the shelf so that we know what happened, what went wrong. I wish we had had that um, when it started for us, <laughs> even from you know 1918. Um, it still would have been nice to have, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's a huge, um, that's gonna be a massive benefit to the community of the future. Let's hope we all are not here when that next one happens. Let's just, Great. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, I so I think, I think Angie will be a good person to work with to take this forward to um, council, maybe with some other ideas. She's so creative about that stuff. And uh, yes, if, if I, I, it sounds like we're all on board with with moving forward with this. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll work on getting some cost estimates. Yeah. Just even a ballpark would be good. You know. Yeah. Excellent. I, Thank I, you so much. Thanks for doing this. I do have a question about procedure. Um, does this fall under one of the broad categories in our plan for spending ARPA money? Well, one of the broad categories uh, it includes uh, responding to the negative impacts of co caused by COVID-19 emergency and supporting public health, health initiatives, including mental health. I think this could fall under that. Okay. I just wondered if we needed to add it before it went to council, if we're to want to use this money. But I, I, I do think that this would not allow for funding for it now because that's in our to be looked at section of our policy not into the to be funded so there would require a um, if we, if this were to be used for those funds it would require an amendment to that plan which as you know is how we've kind of designed it yes great good so angie is on board to help out and we'll get this moving quickly because I, time is short uh to do a report <laughs> June um, and it's February that's, I know. Uh, that's asking a lot so <laughs> yeah we just we need lightning fast uh response to this and, and we need to get rolling on it so yeah. thank you good thank you so much thanks for bringing this forward um next we have uh Ms. Ridge good morning again good morning So um, I guess I'm at a last resort on what to do with um, Washington Township Water Authority uh, with one of our projects um, that is in jeopardy of losing the funding until 2026. Um, as you are aware, I've, I, in the packet that I sent you, uh, we prepared a timeline of we have been working with the water company since October of 2020. Uh, yeah, 
uh, trying to get a work plan from them for the Bicentennial Pathway Project. Um, they presented the county with approximately $500,000 estimate to replace their full main line on this project. Um, this is not reimbursable through NDOT because according to the design plans, the consultants, uh, the, the main line does not, is not in jeopardy. It's not being asked to be relocated due to the project. It's basically we're building a shoulder um, and um, they're wanting their entire line replaced at a cost of approximately $500,000. That would be solely on the Monroe County to pay for that since NDOT um, cannot reimburse it because it's not recommended in the design plans. It's not needed. Um, we have gone as far as if it would have been reimbursed, um, I spoke with Angie and Jeff about a month ago, if it was to be reimbursed, uh, the county would be responsible for 20% of that cost. We had even stepped up and offered to pay that 20% because we would have been liable for it if MDOT would have reimbursed the 80%. That would have been at a cost about $100,000. We received no responses from Washington Township Water anymore. Um, our hands are kind of tied. Our, we've had multiple meetings with NDOT on how we can keep this project. It has moved out to a May letting, which is the absolute last letting date for this fiscal year. Uh, what we were asking Washington, our last request to Washington Township Water is to put into the construction documents with the contractor that's awarded the project to give them permission that if there is damage to their main line, that we will pay for that. Um, it will be, and give the contractor permission to repair the line. Again, we have received nothing. Uh, we cannot get any response. Um, we had issues with Washington Township water on our sample road project. We finally got that ironed out. We pay them timely, as you are aware, we just paid them when they read the claim dockets, $463,000 for Sample Road. That was our portion for move, um, replacing those lines. Um, I, I guess the only thing I guess maybe I could ask is maybe the commissioners writing a letter to the Washington Township Board that they, um, if you move this project out to 2026, the cost has already gone up um, from its origination. Um, if you move it out to 2026, it's only going to cost the project more. We're at a $2 million price tag now. Um, and I, again, I, I, I don't even know where to go at this point. Um, NDOT has, they've worked with us. Um, uh, we've had multiple meetings with Washington Township, um, their attorneys, their engineers, and they are not budging on uh, wanting the county to replace their line. Granted, the line is old, it is dated, but again, we have stated that um, we've, we've tried to do everything to come to an agreement and uh, we're, we're, we've exhausted every avenue. Um, it's, a, it's a shame that a utility company can hold up a project like this um, and not work with the county. Um, uh, so that's, I, I talked to, like I said, Jeff and Angie, and they suggested that I um, come and talk to you guys on how we can move forward or write a letter or something urging Washington Township to um, get some type of provision in our contract that if the, the line is damaged, we will replace as part of the project, that piece of line, but we don't have the funding to replace a $500,000 line that um, on the basis that it could get damaged. And that's what they're stating. There's a possibility, but we deal with that in every utility that we work with, so. Um, I, I appreciate the really thorough um, uh, you know, journal of emails and the timeline was really helpful to have. So I really appreciate you put together a really uh, tight case here um, and explain the situation really well. Um, I think I think it would I, I don't think my colleagues would disagree. I think we need to do something and 
Um, I don't know if um, Mr. Cockrell has any suggestions from the legal side of things, if there's any legal recourse we have as well. Um, I, I, you know, a letter might help, but boy, that's not going to probably do much. Um, what, what's our next step, Mr. Cockrell? I, I think a letter is a good first step, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's, it, we're on a kind of an expedited time schedule. I think a, a letter and then maybe a meeting with just to kind of kind of see where they're at. You know, I know Lisa knows where they're at, but maybe a meeting with a commissioner and okay. some of the board to kind of sit down and talk about it and say, hey, what's going right. on here? Right. Um, well, I think what Lisa and I both want to avoid is the is the pushing of the date for the project. It's a really big expense and it's not fair to the residents of Monroe County to post to postpone this project either, but also the fact that it's going to cost that much more uh, is not fair. Um, so yes, and maybe that's an option too, is to check in their meeting schedule and we can see if we can um, attend a meeting as well. It's a great idea. Okay, let's, um, I, can, can, are we okay working on this or any other ideas? Well, I'm, I'm just curious. I have no idea if this is even a possibility, but is this something the IURC could weigh in on and possibly have any influence? Are, do you happen to know if they're a member of the IURC? They are. They are, because um, actually, um, I think IURC was uh, involved with, um, when I-69 came through, I believe they were involved with some issues with Washington Township water at the time also. And I guess that'd be an answer for Jeff. I, I don't know if we can reach out to the IURC or if they can, I, I'm guessing they probably wouldn't have any control over them holding up our project. That's just a guess. I think they would say that that's a local issue. I, I Having been involved with the IURC previously, I would think that it would be difficult to meet our time frame <laughs> and, and have them involved. I think that's, I'm not sure they have any jurisdiction over this. This seems to be a factual question as to whether that line needs to be replaced because of this project. It sounds to me like Washington Township believes that the line needs replaced um, and they're saying it's because of this project where the engineers that the county and the state has says, if it needs replaced, it's not because of this project. Right. right. They're just stating it needs replaced because of the, the age of their pipe. And maybe their concern is just the cost of doing that later mm -hmm. once there's a park pathway. Commissioner Giffins? Yeah, I... I I wonder what some of their ratepayers feel about this too, because what they're essentially doing is saying um, we're willing to have all of our taxes go up to take care of this, um, or that we're willing to have our tax money go to pay for this instead of other projects. They they want this road finished too, right? They they live there, so I think maybe it's time to ask some of the ratepayers to step up um, and and help with some of this also. All right, so we can move forward pretty quickly with some correspondence. Uh, I like the idea of going to a meeting, so let's work on that very quickly so we weren't gonna delay this project if we can help it. So Jeff, are you gonna construct a letter and send that and ask for a meeting? Or how do you wanna, or you wanna well, contact me? me? Uh, let's talk offline, okay. Lee Baker, you and I. Okay, sounds um, good. So we can figure out who's the most appropriate person. Yeah. Okay. And, and it might be useful if there's a similar example of another project with a water line under it and a different water company, you know, um, and I, to, what to, typically to be happens. perfectly honest, I can't find anybody that's run into this. And it, nobody at NDOT has that's, never, has not dealt with a utility company that's held a project up like this. But I mean, one that, how it normally goes, right? Okay. An example of how it normally oh. goes, okay. right? Yeah. That might be helpful. Okay. So. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much. I'm sorry you're dealing with all this. This is just, you, you just juggle so many things and 
Um, well, it's pretty aggravating. It, it, it is very aggravating that um, put all this work. Ability companies can hold a project like this. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you for bringing it to us. We'll, we'll get we'll get working on it right away. Okay, great. Um, the third um, item is um, related to a letter uh, that we uh, intend to send to the INDOT commissioner. Um, and this is one where we're uh, looking at the uh, roadway area that runs uh, in a square-ish pattern from around uh, 446 and 3rd is one corner. Another corner is 3rd and the bypass. Another corner is 10th and the bypass. And then the last corner is <clears throat> right around University Elementary, um, Russell Road and, and State Road 45. It's kind of a big square and there's a lot going on in that square. And uh, we have constructed a letter uh, requesting a number of studies <clears throat> include of this area, including traffic volume, traffic control device, traffic access and impact, and um, some travel demand forecast modeling. Um, so um, we've worked on this um, letter together, but I have to say that um, I appreciate um, the work of some of our residents and of course, Commissioner Githens um, got this information from her work on the MPO, so brought this forward and really appreciate that as well. Um, that's a big help. So um, are we um, um, satisfied with the contents of the letter in general and, and then we can get this sent out? I am, and, and I, I want our residents to know that some of the request is, has come about because of increased traffic uh, through the new IU Health Campus. And we wanna ensure that um, everybody has access, but most importantly, that emergency uh, ambulances and vehicles uh, mm -hmm. will not be impeded as they try to get people to the hospital. Right. And, and INDOT has <clears throat> plans and they're moving forward with the first stage of this, um, but the plans for improving um, State Road 45 and then specifically the Smith and 3rd Street uh, intersections um, are, are not happening all at once. They're happening very gradually. And so we there's a sense in the community that there needs to be a general plan and a, and a better understanding of traffic demand, especially given um, the increase in development <clears throat> in this quadrant that, that we've outlined. And we just feel like that's what's missing is that sense of how are these things going to work together and how are they going to solve problems or are we just gonna keep having um, issues with traffic um, and this is a very long time period as well that's been outlined by INDOT, <clears throat> which is understandable, but it also puts a great burden on residents um, on the east side of town to try to navigate construction that morphs into the next construction project, which morphs into the next one. This was brought to the MPO, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, um, and they said, look, we don't do traffic studies INDOT has to do this, and that's why this letter is being written. So, okay. Uh, Mr. Cockrell, do we need to vote on this? Oh, might as well. I, I don't, I, you're approving the letter, so I think that would be helpful. All right. Um, I'll make a motion uh, to uh, send this letter on traffic studies. Um, on to uh, the commissioner at the Indiana Department of Transportation. I'll second it. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? Okay, Mr. Cocker, will you please call the roll on the letter? Uh, Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Githens? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Uh, the letter is approved three to zero. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, are there any other uh, departments that have updates? I have a, a, a update kind of a question. I think as, as the 
three commissioners know we're really looking at contracts coming in, uh, especially for service contracts and whether they have uh, gone through the commissioners for approval. Uh, two items have come to light this morning. Um, I think both are have some urgency to them. So I wanted to kind of run them by you there. We've talked about in the office and they kind of fall. Yes, there's a service component um, to each of them. Um, and let me just get them through and just to make sure you're all you're comfortable with us moving forward with moving through the claims process for these. Uh, two of them are with Midwest pre sort services for the assessor's office. Um, essentially, they're paying for postage. However, there is a service component where the the vendor will come in, grab the in these cases already prepared envelopes with the material in them, take them and uh, put postage on them at uh, 51 cents per piece and they charge a $50 lump sum cost to do that. We have two different agreements and uh, or two different arrangements that we've traditionally have used in the past. Uh, the reason this is urgency is one of them are one of them is a mailing that needs to happen uh, that's scheduled to happen at the end of next week. So we just want to make sure you guys are comfortable with these claims going through. Uh, we'll work with the vendor um, to, to get a formal contract in the, in the future, but we just wanted to make sure that you were aware of this. Um, the other is a agreement with or a arrangement with AT&T uh, for our cell phones. It is through the state uh, quantity purchase agreement that AT&T has with the state. Um, clearly, cell phones are a vital part of our operations as the county, and we want to make sure that you guys are aware that those rates for that cell phone services are set with the state QPA and that you are comfortable uh, proceeding with those types of claims. Again, we'll, we're in the process of getting the state QPA and, and probably and get it on your agenda for a formal um, of review and, uh, and approval, but just making sure that you guys are comfortable with those claims going through um, until that all can happen. Yeah, I, I am, I have colleagues, anything? Okay, do we need to vote on this? Yes, I think that would be make me more comfortable since we have an ordinance that says you guys have to approve all these service agreements. Okay. Let me, um... On this, so I'm going to um, make a motion that um, the two uh, claims in question, um, assessor's office uh, with um, Midwest, is it Midwest Presort, and yes. and and the county's um, cell phone AT and T agreement, mm -hmm. um, be approved for claims and will be ratified later. Second. Good. Okay. We have a motion and we have a second. Um, anything else on this item? Let's see if there's public comment. Thanks for cleaning all of this up. I know this is pretty a pretty hairy mess. Um, well, not a mess, but it's pretty hairy I, to go through all these. <laughs> I am just going to to let you know this is probably not our last uh, conversation I'm about guessing. this. That's why I guessed. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Um, I don't see any um, comment from the public. Um, uh, would you please call the roll, Mr. Cockrell? Uh, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Giffins. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Motion is approved three to zero. Excellent. Great. All right. Do you have something else for us? I think that's what I have today. <laughs> More to come. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have anything, Ms. Purdy? I do not, no. Okay, all right. Okay, well, great. It uh, looks like we don't have anything else. And so um, we are adjourned. Our next meeting is February 9th. Thanks, Cats. Thanks, TSD. We're adjourned.